here basically is, is the rule keeper. Uh, as Michael mentioned, this is a, a 500 page document. There's a lot of details in there and we just want to make sure we get it right. Uh, the city, uh, as Mr. Barber mentioned, has allocated $955,000 to this section of our ARPA program and the application will be available on both the United Way website, I believe later today it will be out on the city's website. Uh, website. So I'll be happy to take any questions you have on the, the technicalities of the program. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is, is I travel a lot of cities as to get to free press, Douglas, Quitman, and other places. And it, they have been working on this for quite a long time. I have addressed the city council at least three times concerning this, and it's what we got back and never did. So my question is, why now and why have the community been notified earlier and what news media press release was done by this meeting so the general public had more time to decide what they could be in there or not? That's three questions. Okay. Uh, I'll try to take them in order. Uh, the timing of this was determined largely by the release of the final rules. Uh, I know a lot of places have been working on it a while, but lots have been looking at it a while. Uh, but the, the rules for ARPA kept changing, and as we had stated earlier, we don't want to issue anything uh, that, that may end up not being in the final rule. Uh, now that we've got the final rule, we've moved fairly expeditiously once we had that in hand. Uh, we had issued a press uh, release Monday uh, or Tuesday on this. Uh, I know that was fairly short timing, but again, once we had the final rule, we wanted to get moving and we wanted to make it fast so that we could get the, hand, the, the funds out of the hands of the community. Uh, we know that a lot of people have been waiting on this. We know there's a lot of good to be done out there. And uh, the sooner we get moving, the sooner that can happen. Does that, does that get all your question? That, that's close to it, but let me add this. I don't want to take my time, but in a lot of the other cities like Douglas, we know this is months ago. Uh, GMA came down and did an outstanding, superb uh, educational meeting telling people that if the city council, mayor, that if you don't, uh, this first seat comes right, you could end up in jail. Because there were people up in the Atlanta area, North Georgia, that had not uh, worked, they were not working in the right direction. And so, uh, do GMA come here? Do you think they've done about that and have educated the legislation? We, we have gone to GMA uh, educational programs. They've presented uh, telecast uh, webinars uh, on, the, on the subject. I don't know that we have plans for GMA personnel to physically come to the city of Colorado, but we have we have taken those classes, we have watched those uh, materials come out, and we have watched the releases uh, from the federal government as well. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Ryan, if I can add uh, to your point about what GMA was talking about, that's exactly why we, like I mentioned earlier, we intentionally take in our time so we don't wind up one of the Metro Atlanta uh, community that's already been in violation. So, and so, but again, we, GMA Habits has been here, but we've been to their training classes. Uh, Council Woman Cody sent on the board of GMA, so she's been, she's been part of all of that decision making as well. So we felt pretty confident with GMA with the classes we attended and following their guidance. It was also their guidance when the interim came out telling communities do not move in this interim world we're in because we can see those rules changing when the final change. So I hope that helps so much well. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Um, Chris and Hannah, Boys and Girls Club. It's my understanding that you guys have tried to make this process pretty fast for us, turnarounds fast. Can you let us know about how much time you think the application would take? And then if we receive funds, what reporting might look like? What what might look like? What reporting for received funds might look like? Okay. Well, the application, as I said, is five or six pages. It's out on, it'll be out on both websites by the end of the day. Uh, we hope to, uh, the, the 
applications are due back the last Monday of June, which is the 27th, if I remember correctly. Uh, we uh, will need a few weeks to look that over. Um, there'll be a scoring sheet by the committee, and then we'll take the, uh, the scores and kind of plug them in and sign funding. Uh, after that, we'll have a vote from the city council to endorse it. And from there, it should be a week or so before we can start cutting checks. If I can add, the application process, as Mike mentioned earlier, is a lot of things we're asking for you already have. Nine, nine, eight, things of that nature are things that are required as part of the, uh, of the offer funding. So we've already, it's going to be things you guys already have on hand that will be hard to create. Yeah, yeah, we may, well, I say we, I mean, rely on his expertise, but we try very hard not to ask for anything that wouldn't be something you would, would have readily on hand. Yes, ma'am. Can you give us an overview of what the rules are? Like the rules are you have to be based in Lowndes County. The rules are you have to be bigger than X number of dollars or littler. What are the rules? What are the rules? They're, well, they're all, they're all very well explained in the application of the qualified census tract, what is eligible for reimbursement, what isn't eligible as, for reimbursement. You, it has an economic loss section that you can check or a program support section you can check. Um, it, this is, was, event was more of a kickoff for awareness because the month-long window uh, opens today. So for y'all to share the information, share that it's available and online, we can have another one to answer more questions. But we, I believe a lot of things will be answered in reading the application. Most of it is explanation. There's also uh, links that you can click on to take you to more detail of Treasury guidelines. Uh, but like you said, 990s, uh, annual budget, uh, located in Lowndes County, and making sure that the nonprofit serves the people in those qualified census tracts. You don't have to only serve that. But you need to show that you are helping the people in that qualified census tract area. And that's a multiple group of census tracts. The map is included. There's also a link to the website that shows all the qualified census tract and the difficult development areas. So, and those were all set by Treasury and our And just to add a little bit to that, uh, the Final regulations don't address the organization directly as you're talking about. It focuses more on the, the program or the type of expenditure that you're uh, looking at. So it, it tells the type of expenditures that are eligible, the type that are not. And, and the list is not comprehensive. Uh, but for example, uh, you can't use anything for lobbying, which I don't think that's going to come as a surprise to anyone. Uh, but they are looking uh, for impacts from the pandemic. How are, you, how are you impacted by the pandemic? What are you doing to serve populations that were impacted by the pandemic? What programs are you putting in place to help affected populations recover? Yes, ma'am. How long has the final rule been? I'm sorry? How long have you had the final rule? March. March. Yeah, March. A little. Yeah, but it's, it's somewhere in March, in late February or March, when yeah. we got our first copy. And then as I think we had mentioned, it's about a 500 page document, so it took a little bit of time to digest it. And then, of course, the City Council had to retreat. The City Council had to retreat. They had to come up with their ideas and plans and tentative uh, projects. And then that officially had to be voted on and then process, and then they had to officially vote on the committee before uh, those funds were actually like locked into place for us to start this. Uh, there's a scoring metric that the committee will have, and the scoring criteria are financial slash budget, agency management slash organizational capacity, program results, community need, and COVID response. So, um, we encourage everybody to turn in applications, but there is qualifying numbers and, and categories that will make you eligible. And then after that, it'll be scored. And like we said, we don't know if there's 40 
are 140 <laughs> nonprofits that will be eligible. Uh, uh, so we have a good working relationship with a lot of the nonprofits in our community, but we don't know everyone. So, uh, so please take time to look at the application. Uh, you can reach out to me and ask questions. Uh, we will work on trying to have another informational session. But uh, this is a great opportunity, and it's just a great honor that the city is uh, allocating some funds to help out outside of uh, water and sewer and uh, government programs to help non nonprofits and small businesses. So. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I have a question. I, I just noticed I heard you say a couple of times that it's Lowndes County, uh, that you know, more or less Lowndes County is doing this. Uh, for one thing, and I also heard you say something about other organizations, municipalities, local governments could help, you know, you hope they would help. Did you reach out to Lowndes County to ask the county uh, entity about helping and supporting you with this? Yes, I've had some conversations with Lowndes County government to see if they would be interested in doing that. Uh, nothing has happened yet. I think they have a, a, a set of plans that they're looking at for their funds. But um, I hope they look at it, or Remerton and any other uh, government in South Georgia, and of course, uh, if the school systems look at how to use their ARPA dollars to help uh, nonprofits in need and the nonprofits that help so many of us uh, are, and uh, people that were vulnerable and affected by COVID the most. So uh, it is conversations, uh, but uh, they haven't set a plan. They may be waiting to see how all this goes. Like I said, this is, a, we are doing something new. And, uh, and then, like, the business committee will get formed and officially launched. And, whenever they do, but uh, we're getting this going first uh, and uh, very excited about the opportunity this summer. But I was just wondering because, you know, qualified census track, it doesn't include Lowndes County. If we were, if census was the city, a uh, portion just being involved, are, are we going to, you going to use this funds or these to kind of spread out to the county? Since I kept hearing that. You have to help people in the qualified census track of the city of Austin. But your office, your nonprofit, doesn't have to be only located in that census tract area. As long as you have an office location in Lowndes County, you can apply, but you have to help predominantly or show that you help in a majority of way these not the, the people in the city of Austin census tract. But that doesn't mean you have to help just 100% of those people. But uh, does that help clearly your yeah, question? That's what I was wondering. Thank you. Yeah. And also, Ms. Dooley, uh, Councilman Dooley, uh, the question is really good because uh, just because they're the unincorporated area does not prohibit them. Just because we talk about census tracts and things of that nature, as long as they're held in an underserved community and that it's considered disproportionately affected by the pandemic. So I can have a business that's really kind of located out. In the county and out, but long as I'm helping in that, and I understand that's help. absolutely okay. correct. So it, it, it does not prohibit Lowndes County from participating. <coughs> exactly, and, and as you mentioned, uh, there, there is a, a map attached to the application that that, that shows what uh, is considered disproportionately impacted uh, according to the rates. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned. In regards to uh, Councilwoman's question, you mentioned that there is a percentage. It has to be within a certain percentage for, what, what is the percentage? For the we city? didn't set a set percentage. Okay. You, there's, you as a nonprofit should be able to show with your records and demographics of where you help and who you help and how you help those people that you serve. There's questions that ask those kind of questions, but we did not say that you have only 60% or 92%. Uh, the application had certain requirements, but then uh, it couldn't be too restrictive either. So it is about getting people qualified or nonprofits qualified 
then scored uh, and based and then ranked based on those scores for their needs. Does that help? Kind of. I don't think my question was clear. Yes. 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 Well, I think part of it too goes back to what we talked about at the beginning. Uh, and, you know, this is at this point kind of an unknown, uh, so we, we don't know how many uh, applications we're going to get. Uh, so some of that is, you know, it's going to be allocated. We, we know what we're dividing, but we don't know what we're dividing by at this point. Well, I have a question for that. <coughs> Since what you're saying that and there was a certain amount allocated for the nonprofit organizations, right? In, in total, yes, ma'am. Um, once you start looking at the numbers that you have and you find that there's possibility a little need for extra, is there any way that you can adjust the amount that is going to be allocated? Is there any conversation about adjusting the amount? That uh, was allocated for the nonprofit organization. Did you, you talk about the total allocation? Yes, sir. Well, that would be a decision for the city council. So it can be if it's uh, requested by the organization that you found you have a different for your formula that you have. You have more organizations that you feel you can serve that you would probably request a change in the allocation amount. Well, I can't speak to what would be requested by the committee, uh, but, but there is a an overall uh, amount of argument that the city is received, and uh, again, the committee divvy that up a certain way. And that the 955 is the current total allocation for nonprofits. And just one on that, let's go on the floor council and retreat. If we see we need more than $955,000, I think that'd be your question. Right. And we know some areas we may not spend everything we said some areas. So we've already talked about this is going to be living, breathing, mayor and council. At that point in time, then can make that decision. I said we know two hundred thousand dollars. Mayor and council can make that decision then to reallocate two hundred thousand dollars from a project over here that didn't get one hundred percent spent to um, nonprofit or uh, any other one of the uh, one of our other projects as well. So that would be a mayor and council decision at the time. Now one of the things we did, uh, we, we patterned a lot of our application and process with Columbus, Georgia. Uh, they they um, they started their applications a little earlier because they got money more earlier than we did. Uh, uh, with the CARES, they got some things they could do with the CARES that we couldn't because we didn't meet the uh, population. They did a good job. But one thing that they have in there, and some other communities that we looked around, they did a first come, first serve, and it was cut off. And we didn't want to do that. So that's why we've, we've designed it this way, to hold it open, because some, some, some perhaps somebody has some trouble finding a file they need. So we didn't want them not to be, to get their, you know, the name of the box for an allocation, because it was a first come, first serve. So we changed that up a little bit to make it be, as Chuck would say, we don't know how many applications we're going to get. All we know right now is we've got $955,000 to allocate as those applications come into this. That. So that's why we kind of didn't do it first come, first serve, and structure it in the manner we did. Does that answer your question? Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I hear you all say that once we get the application, things will be a lot clearer. There's a lot explained in here, and that's probably going to call for another meeting. But how are you going to determine, how is it going to be determined the amount of funding you're going to get? Is it going to be based on, are these census tract areas you're talking about? Are these the hood census tract areas? Where are these areas? Uh, if you're not serving people in those census tract areas, if you're, if you're providing services to underserved or low income, how does that going to play into how the funding is dispersed? Okay. The census tract scan, there's a, there's a map attached to the back. And so you can see exactly which census tracts we're talking about there. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that are deemed to be disproportionately impacted. Now, as far as the, the final allocation, the, the actual dollar amount, uh, the applications are going to be reviewed by a committee, uh, and that committee's 
listed there so you can see who we're talking about. Uh, but they will score the applications. All right, and then the final dollar amount will be based on the score on the application and the number of applications received. So, you know, you know, the higher the score and the fewer applications, uh, the higher those individual dollar amounts would be. But then for the reverse, the lower that would be. And again, it, it depends largely on how many applications we get. So if we get 20, uh, you know, the individual awards would be larger than if we get 120. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, is the funding going to be the same amount for all the nonprofits? Um, is it going to be determined by how many people you serve, um, where you're located, that, that kind of thing, or is everything going to be kind of across the board as far as funding? I don't think it's going to be across the board, but, but again, some of those questions, I'm not trying to be cagey, it's just without seeing the pool that we're dealing with, uh, we, we've got to wait until we see how big the pool is before we can make some of those determinations. A couple of these things will be decided after we've got the, the stack in front of us. Okay. Ms. Rachel, one of the things that Columbus did that we didn't really care for, they did make it a possible. It was like if your budget was uh, $100,000, amount you're going to get regardless of what you do or what your organization does is twenty five thousand dollars. If your budget was fifty or lower it was twelve thousand five hundred. So we weren't quite ready again to do that because like I said we don't want it to be first come first serve and we want to make sure you know those that are qualified where, where they're getting some type of distribution. So we've chosen not to go that route with Columbus Chef. Um, it made it simple for them. Um, but I don't think it was the most equitable way to make sure everybody was getting some allocation. Does that help some? <coughs> yeah, I mean, just to add on to that a little bit, the, the committee, I think, wants to look at not, not just the organization itself, but the, the particular program that you're trying to, to uh, implement with this. So again, you know, what, what are you doing in response to COVID, you know, I've got this program that I want to do. Maybe that, maybe, and I know I sounds like I'm kind of splitting hairs, but maybe I'm funding this program as opposed to this organization, if that makes sense. One last question on the light side. I hear you say you're part of the uh, city of Columbus, the guideline of you. They weren't one of the cities that got in trouble with the government, were they? <laughs> 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 Very much, Council Walker. Speaking of that, I've noticed that you know, got a lot more money in the city of Austin, uh, a bigger community. I've talked to the chamber. I'm close to the United Way director over there. They run everything through the chamber, nonprofit and business. And right now, they still have like 500 applications in, in the pile. They thought it was very wise that it was split up because nonprofits and businesses operate differently. Uh, you know, nonprofits are very used to giving up a lot of their financial information and filling out grants information. So uh, splitting it into two committees uh, seems like it's a good idea. Uh, the application has, you know, estimates. You know, we don't know, we know how to set them out. You can request, and if you can show that request, you can request, but we put in there kind of with an estimated amount is because what we don't want is somebody showing that they are fault they can, I mean there's agencies that can prove they deserve four hundred thousand of that money. But that is not the point of this. It's not to have just a few people get the funds. It's to help as many nonprofits as possible. So there's a good chance that small nonprofits with small budgets that may get awarded five or seven grand, that's a good bit of money for a nonprofit that has only a fifty thousand dollar annual budget or something. We, the point is to help the nonprofits that help people in those qualified census tracts. And uh, we would love the opportunity if City Council looks and we have so many applications and so many good ones that there can be another phase or find money and 
I think, uh, can't speak for the committee or anything, but those applications would stay there. I think you'd have to fill out another one, and then there would be another round of maybe another 20 more applicants that would get funded. So a lot of this comes back to city council. It comes back to approval of the city and funds and projects, uh, and, it, and it'd be in a process. Uh, so uh, please let us work within the process and, and maybe even tweak it a little bit as we go. But at the end of the day, the city is willing to put some funds to help nonprofits, uh, and that's a good thing because right now it's hard to raise money from the business sector. It's hard. Uh, nonprofits have had COVID losses, and of course, increases in uh, inflation and cost and payroll. So uh, uh, it, it's a good opportunity, and we're thankful for the, the opportunity that you know, the city is willing to do for this. Yes, ma'am. This is, may have been asked already. I didn't hear it. Are the qualified citizens tracks only in the city of Evanston? Yes. The, the, the qualified census tracks that we're looking at, yes, there's a map on the back. Uh, if, if you're talking about the, the, the regs as a whole, uh, there are other tracks. The tracks that we're looking at are the ones on that map in the back. In the just, back just the city of Evanston. Yes, ma'am. For the record, for the record, this is the first public meeting where, with uh, citizen participation in this program. Am I correct? For the record, if, if, if by the, the, the program you mean the non-profit yes. specifically, yes, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes, thank you. I have, a, I have a question and also a statement. I'm Reverend Robert Jackson. I have a nonprofit, Soul Production Community Service, and I have a for profit. Our for profit helps support the nonprofit. Um, some businesses help support the nonprofit. I've been to the city, been in business for 14 years. Spent three years since 2010 bringing solar power awareness to the community. The city responded with the awareness for solar, and they asked me, could I design a solar power facility for a wastewater treatment plant? I did that, um, but it was told from the city, Mr. Jackson, if you can help us with that, we will help you. In return, design, approval, no help, no support from me at all for what I've done. I also went to the city three years straight and asked them for support for the nonprofits with a very simple concept. We all have an electric bill. The electric bill is going up. Our senior citizens <coughs> and fixed income homeowners can't afford these high electric bills. We would like to submit a proposal for a grant for 5,000 homes to get a solar added plan to reduce, to reduce the electric bill almost 45, 50%. It's set, it's set, it's set, year after year after year. No response. Every time I hear a grant opportunity to support the city and the communities of the city, it is so much paperwork and it doesn't go nowhere for the end user. I'm not here for five or seven thousand dollars. I'm here to help our citizens and I'm begging this city and you guys who understand what I'm trying to say. We are trying to support those who are fixed income and our seniors who have a high electric bill. And this simple procedure can reduce their bill almost 50%. And it's been done and proven all that time. Nice. What I found out, what I have found out is whenever we submit well, I submit support to the Chambers of Commerce, to the city, to the city. The idea was that, wait a minute, wait a minute, this public. 
The idea was taken, but it's also being supported by the chambers of Congress who revamped their, their service and said, why we can't do this? So I see a lot of my ideas go somewhere else, and I don't get the benefit. So um, this is a public, public meeting. I'm just bringing to you, you the awareness that I have been trying for over 12 years to get a grant from our city through the city council and through the chamber's support. Nothing has happened. Can you guys please tell me what I'm doing wrong? Because the electric bills and our senior citizens, some are being evicted because they can't afford electric bills. Well, this particular program, again, is a offshoot of ARPA. This is part of the city's ARPA's fund. So this, is, this has only been uh, available uh, since the city council decided to allocate a piece of this. So this would be a, a whole separate deal from anything that would have come prior. Uh, so obviously anything that you would like to apply for as part of this program, you're certainly welcome to apply for it. It would not have anything to do with any uh, past applications or requests that you can put in. This this is a whole whole new deal. We get more. Thanks. All right, I appreciate you coming out. Thank you all for being here. Uh, share the application. Tell people about it. Look it over. And uh, it's due uh, Monday, June twenty seventh. So thank you very much.